Kobe Bryant was one of the greatest athletes of all time. Five NBA championships, 18 All-Stars, plus an Oscar winner. In 2016, we got to peer into his mind. Bryant gave his speech at an awards show. He used the moment to address all athletes. Take a listen. We're not on the stage just because of talent or ability. We're up here because of 4 a.m. We're up here because of two-a-days or five-a-days. We're up here because we had a dream and let nothing stand in our way. If anything tried to bring us down, we used it to make us stronger. We were never satisfied, never finished, will never be retired. Bryant said, we are not on this stage just because of talent or ability. We're up here because of 4 a.m. We're up here because of two a days or five a days. We're up here because we had a dream and we let nothing stand in our way. It was the Mamba mentality on full display. There's a powerful lesson embedded in Bryant's message. No matter how talented you are, you can't cheat the work. Bryant was an obsessive athlete. He'd work out at 4 a.m. He trained three times as much or more as others. He had a ruthlessly competitive mindset. He was the perfect example of what happens when elite talent and work ethic come together. The lesson here isn't to be Kobe Bryant. The lesson here is how to become your best self. And whatever your craft, you can't cheat the work. There's a process to becoming great at anything. It requires time, intention, and discipline. It demands an unreasonable commitment. It's not for the mamby-pamby or the faint-hearted. There is no shortcut to the top of a mountain. So what does it mean to not cheat the work? And how do you ensure that you don't? Here are a few thoughts on that. Number one, the choice. Alabama football coach Nick Saban talks about the five choices we have in life. Let me show you that. You know, we have about five choices, you know, in our life. You know, we can be bad at what we do. I mean, we can be average at what we do. I mean, we can be good at what we do, which probably is God's expectation for whatever ability he gave us. Or we can be excellent or we can be elite. All right? And everybody has a choice as to what they want to do and how they want to do that. But if you're going to be excellent or elite, all right, you got to do special things. You have to have special intensity. You have to have special focus. You have to have uh, a special commitment and drive and passion right, to do things at a high level and a high standard all the time. Right? And it doesn't matter what God-given ability that you have. Uh, that probably can make you good. But without the rest of it, I'm not sure you ever get excellent or elite. Number one, you can be bad. Number two, you can be average. Number three, you can be good. Number four, you can be excellent. Or number five, you can be elite. If you want to be excellent or elite, you have to do special things. You have to have special intensity, focus, commitment, drive, and passion to do the things at a high level and a high standard all the time. No matter what God-given ability you have, that can probably make you good. But without the rest of it, you'll never get to excellent or elite. Number two, never done, always better. Georgia football coach Kirby Smart, a Saban protege, has won back-to-back -back national championships at UGA. He knows the Bulldogs' big biggest opponent in 2023 wouldn't be another team, it would be entitlement. The very next morning, after winning their second consecutive national championship, head coach Kirby Smart said, quote, start thinking about the next one. I do think it's gonna be much tougher. And I think we'll have to reinvent ourselves next year because you can't just stay the same. The disease that creeps into your program is called entitlement, he said. It is why great organizations fail. Entitlement destroys them. Complacency is the enemy. 88% of Fortune 500 companies in 1955 are no longer around. They're either out of business or have been acquired. 88%. In recent history, numerous examples of great companies have gone bankrupt. Blockbuster, Polaroid, Borders, Kodak, Circuit City, Radio Shack, Toys R Us, Lehman Brothers, Compaq, Arthur Anderson, and many, many others. All of them reached championship level success, but then eventually failed. Smart's challenge, as it is with all leaders, will be getting his players to sustain championship level success. His message to his team was simple and powerful. We stay hungry. We stay humble. We can always improve. We're never above the work. We're never entitled to success. 
human nature assumes success will continue, but that's not the case. Everything must be earned all the time. Once you make the choice to do the work required to be successful, you must have the humility to know nothing is ever owned or guaranteed. And number three, consistency. Ah, oh, consistency. This is where the rubber meets the road. It's what separates the good from the great and the great from the elite. The invisible thread binds all high performers in sports, business, or any endeavor in life. It is the one thing that can't be compromised. And Kobe Bryant knew this all too well. Imagine shooting a thousand free throws a day, rain or shine. Imagine hitting the gym at 4 a.m. while the rest of the world still sleeps. Imagine studying game films late into the night to better understand your opponent's tactics. That's consistency. It's doing what needs to be done day in and day out, regardless of how you feel and regardless of how many championships you've already won. It is not about motivation, it's about discipline. In my book, The Compound Effect, it discusses the power of small, consistent actions over time. They may seem insignificant on their own, but they compound, creating a snowball effect that leads to massive results. This concept was the cornerstone of Kobe's Mamba mentality. He understood the power of consistency. He understood that small, seemingly insignificant choices made consistently over time lead to a significant difference in one's performance. Let's take an example from the business world. Let's say that you commit to making five extra calls each day. On its own, it doesn't seem like much, but do the math. That's 25 extra calls a week, 100 a month, and 1,200 a year. Now imagine how those extra calls can impact your business over a year or five years. It's a game changer, but it all starts with the choice to be consistent. Consistency isn't glamorous. It doesn't make headlines, but it is the backbone of success. It's the secret sauce that all high performers understand and apply. They don't seek the quick fix or the shortcut. They understand that success is a marathon not a sprint. And the only way to get to the finish line is to keep putting one foot in front of the other consistently. Remember, it's not about being perfect. It's about being consistent. It's about showing up day after day and doing the work, whether you feel like it or not, because that's what champions do. They don't let their feelings dictate their actions. They let their commitment to their goals dictate their actions. They stay consistent. And that, my friends, is the true essence of the Mamba mentality. So in summary, if you take nothing else away from this episode, take this lesson from Kobe Bryant. No matter how good you are, no matter how talented you are, no matter how much you have achieved, you can't cheat the work in sports, in business, and in life. So my Darren Daily friends, name a thing or two that you can do to step up your Mamba mindset a notch or maybe 10. Tell us that in the comments below.